Watch Dogs 2 is the sequel to the 2014 game, which was somewhat relatively well received. The main story follows Retro, a young, notorious hacker on his recruitment into DedSec, the same vigilante hacker group from the last game, and Tashi had taken down Bloom, the money-hungry, data-stealing Big Brother Corp, again from the last game. Coordinated from the heart of Silicon Valley, CTOS 2.0 has been implemented across the United States, ushering in the Internet of Things. 6.4 billion connected devices now serve as collection points, mapping and recording our daily routines, making a more secure and more invasive system. Full disclosure, I've played about 8 hours of the game, and while I can't say I've seen everything, I've got more than enough time under my belt to let you know if it's worth buying. I haven't played the multiplayer aspects of it, as they were disabled due to network head as well as writing this review. And even when they did return, they slowed the game down so much I found myself cursing Ubisoft yet again for integrating this crap into my single player experience. Even after I disabled the multiplayer features in the options, the game still forces you to sign in at the startup of every game and you've still got all the multiplayer and co-op icons all over your map even in your mission features, which was a gripe for me. I personally don't play these type of games for the multiplayer experience. You're talking to the guy who probably put less than an hour into GTA Online. So personally, I won't be marking the game down for not having the multiplayer and co-op missions enabled. However, I will not be giving it a pass for still trying to force those features on me. The first thing I noticed was this game does a complete 180 on the previous instalment. Gone are the brooding characters and gritty anonymous-esque hacker group. Now we have a wisecracking pop culture referencing group of super cool 20-somethings. And I have to admit, as a gamer in my 30s, I felt a little uncomfortable with the early game wisecracking and group banter. It's not that it makes me feel old, but it felt like another 30-something game developer was tasked with writing how these teenagers think and speak, and somewhat missing the mark. Like this reference to Diablo. He's in the system. Nobody's gotten that far. This is like the secret cow level. Really? Did you think anyone under the age of 25 is going to get that? I barely got it, and I consumed games like they were audio sprinkled with crack. So on the one hand you got a game that feels like it's aimed towards the younger generation but at the same time everything that they're referencing and talking about is more my generation. The crew is made up of Retro, the main protagonist, a confident daring hacker, uh, maybe serial killer is a better description but more on that in a moment. Next up is Wrench, an otherwise cracking hacker and engineer who always wears a face mask and I kind of like him. He becomes the best friend of sorts for Retro, and his facial expressions usually get a little smile out of me. Did Luke ride on Yoda's back? I think not. I was always more of a Lando man myself. Then there's Josh, who I'm assuming is somewhere on the autistic spectrum, or maybe he's just socially inept. And then there's two more who I can barely remember. One's a girl who's a graphic designer, and another guy who sits around the HQ doing nothing. While the story did fail to grab me early on, I have to admit, I enjoyed it a lot more than the previous game. It's bright, cheerful, not so personal of a story this time round. There's a group of you and all you want to do is make a name for DedSec again and achieve this by doing a series of public stunts a la Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Designed to get the public on your side and garner more followers on social media so that they let you use a portion of their process and power by downloading the DedSec app and help make you make a homebrew cloud computing network to aid in your battle with Bloom. The more silly premise is not a problem for me. Like I said, the game is more upbeat and this means each mission is more outlandish than the last. It really was reminding me of something and I couldn't quite put my finger on it until I watched this cutscene. Hackers love a challenge. You getting it? Maybe I'll give you a few clues. Last generation, a group of people set out to take over a city using outlandish crazy missions. Yep, Saints Row 2 with hacking. 
It totally does feel like Saints Row 2 to me. It's got crazy missions, weird and larger than life characters. As soon as I realised this, I just couldn't shake the comparison. Now what did I mean before about being a serial killer? Everything I just said about the upbeat fun game flies completely in the face of the fact that Retro will be murdering security guards and gang members like yeah, there's no tomorrow. The tone of the infiltration missions just doesn't match with the premise of the game. But it's not a major issue, especially when that killing is done with extremely fun hacking abilities, like taking over the car and running people over with it on a whim. The main bulk of the infiltration is very similar to the previous game though. You arrive, use cameras to scope out the area, mark enemies and try to disable as many of them before going in yourself on foot. This time though you have a couple of extra tools at your disposal, namely two small drones, one's called the Hopper, it rides along the ground and it's used to covertly hack doors and scurry through vents to open up more possibilities, and a flying drone which flies around. <laughs> Both are fun to use and for the few moments each mission that you'll actually use them for, they can be somewhat helpful. The chase mechanics are very similar to the last game too. I'm not sure how I feel about them. It's a good concept but the opportunities fly past in a second and it can feel difficult to steer at high speeds trying to dodge suicidal cops who will just drive into you to try and stop you and look for hacking opportunities while all this is going on. It feels fun when it works, but most of the time it's just had me frustrated. Now let's talk about the graphics. How did they look to you? Because when I first played this, hitting the streets, it looked like a complete mess to me. There's jaggies everywhere, and I can't believe I'm saying this in 2016. Almost every object and building has step-like artifacts around the edges, and it left me just feeling a little bit deflated, especially when you can usually count on Ubisoft to make great looking locations, like Assassin's Creed. There hasn't been a single Assassin's Creed game that hasn't had brilliant graphics and absolutely superbly detailed cities. I thought the game was just lacking a final layer of polish before it was shipped, and I recently played through GTA V again on the Xbox One, and even though the game's older and technically a port, I'd say GTA V looked just as good if not a lot better. The sound is great, except there's no volume control for the individual sound channels. Sometimes the radio is difficult to hear over the noise of some of the car engines and I would appreciate the slider to raise and lower them respectively. But that being said, I really like how noise echoes in smaller spaces and guns sound different depending on where and how far away they are fired. So should you buy this game? Well yeah, if you enjoyed the gameplay, the last Watch Dogs title, but not necessarily the tone. And if you enjoyed Saints Row 2, that would probably help a lot as well. But I have to warn you, this game is like having sex with someone only to find out that they shit all over your bed while you're in the bathroom. Sure, you had a great time, but you're always going to be reminded of the shit you had to deal with. I'd say wait for it to go on sale. And that hurts me because I generally love Ubisoft. But if they don't learn to segregate multiplayer from single player, sort out polishing issues that persist through the games, whether it's controls or presentation, the day is soon going to come where I ask myself, why do I even call myself a fan of their games? Well, thanks for watching, guys. This was a little experiment for me to try and do a bit more in-depth review on, their, some, on a new game. Uh, I hope you liked it. Hope you managed to get through my terrible voiceovers because seriously, this is difficult to do. Just sounding natural and that is just not, does not come easy to me. But if there's anything you think I can improve on, drop a comment in the comment section and uh, I'll certainly take it on board. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll be back with a new review for Final Fantasy 15, although that's probably going to be at least. Uh, two weeks after the game launches because it is a big game and it's not as easy to get through as Watch Dogs was. See you later, guys.